Hi, thanks so much everyone for the support that you give this channel. Hackers are rolling back the numbers all the time. Problems taking down your likes, taking down comments, yours and mine. This was um, something I showed at the live stream. You're seeing the sun without any solar flares facing Earth at the moment. Um, I filmed this 15th, I believe. It was, uh, sorry, 16th. Uh, the day after I caught the black triangle on the 15th. So check it out. Exposures down so that you can see another object continuing downwards. So I saw two objects, but here's the thing. The two objects are moving simultaneously. They also appear simultaneously. Watch carefully. You'll see on the top an object that looks like it's inside of the atmosphere of the sun, literally. I've showed it in the past, and there's that object on the left which as hard as it is to believe obviously having a shadow on the sun whether it be possible or not visually it's what we are seeing watch carefully the object at the same time it's literally the shadow of the other object i think i could be wrong either way it's inside of the sun's atmosphere so what could it be could there be a large object asteroid near the sun there actually is a large object or asteroid near the sun um they're already talking about it but they're not showing us that's for sure how large would this object be do you remember the last time i showed um this type of phenomena or which um exotic matter uh, crawl face thanks a lot for the heads up i was looking into it exotic matter you know sometimes things in space even nasa says it in the three branches of military it defies the laws of physics in space things sometimes defy the laws of physics so we're going to see this once and then twice this is the object let's see it one more time so that's the object that i don't know i don't know what it is that was the last time very similar right even the tra uh, trajectory is very similar but again it looks like it's inside of the sun's atmosphere it would be inside of the corona look at this object for example that catches on fire even looks like there's smoke coming from it with the conversion here we'll see it a couple of times a bit quicker um and closer so that's the object that you can see that it's off of the sun in other words it doesn't seem like it's inside of the atmosphere of the sun um here again this is the one that is inside of the atmosphere of the sun let's check that one more time i forgot to show you this right before the other frame here it is a bit closer so it's something that's very very close to the sun the sphere of it right even though they say it's hydrogen and it's not solid and that it's whatever why would there be a shadow appearing on it i mean it's absolutely incredible here's an object going by the sun so we have objects shooting out of the sun all the time very recently i showed you some plasma but this literally looks like um, either an asteroid skimming through the corona or very close to the sun or literally plasma lifting up um, off of the sun literally and this is caused again by um, solar flares and then corona mass ejections and then uh, there's dangers for earth as they say of course we say it all the time geomagnetic storms right check it out here how close we are and it's literally large enough object so you know, this object is as big as Earth. This one, a lot bigger than Earth. Think of it. It's approaching the sun. But you see what I showed you at the beginning? We did not see it approaching the sun. We saw it coming over the bend of the north side of the sun. So what could it be? Ladies and gents, um, very unclear moon. Uh, I'll tell you that much. This is probably one of the unclearest I've ever showed, even though it's pretty good. So I am going to show it and put it up, uh, get a couple of zoom-ups and shots. There's a disturbance uh, in the waters around uh, uh, or between Earth and the moon. We could once again see the moon all wobbly. And when did I see that last? Well, when Bereshit hit the moon, coincidence or not, seems that the atmosphere around the moon was disturbed. And you can see all this shaking and everything. Thanks so much for the support to this channel, everyone. Thanks for watching. So this, again, was yesterday's moon.
you just saw a whole bunch of birds going by, and not one of them looked like the black triangle I showed you the other day, just saying. That was definitely a black triangle I caught the other day. I hope they capture it again. First time in five years, I'll take it. The moon on the surface, we just saw Mare Fecunditatis, le mari de fécondité, is where all the UFOs are, of course. Not all of them, but a lot of the ones that I've seen. The UFO fleet that I've shown in the past was there. Elon Musk, uh, and we're going to talk about Elon Musk and Mare Chrysium. They're supposed to be a launch where they're going to go drop some cargo off inside of Mare Chrysium. Notice the amazing lines over on the left is Mare Chrysium right there. Let's take a look at it. There's Mare Chrysium. And I want you to take note of all those lines on the left. They are aiming to be able to drop Elon Musk's starship on the lunar surface would be inside of Mare Chrysium, apparently to drop off some cargo. This being in 2022, uh, SpaceX President and Chief Operating Officer Gwyn Shotwell said during a NASA organized teleconference. So, they're supposed to land on the moon. We're really on the verge of finding out whether there really is something up there on the moon, I think. Are they going to share the moon? You know, so much could happen. They could split the moon in half where uh, humans can land on one side and they'll never get for another 100 or 200 years to the other side of the moon. No permission or anything. The aliens could still live there if they were there without them even being known. All these scenarios are possible, you know, whether there are humans or aliens on the moon. That's not even something I'm worried about. I know there's structures up there, geometrical shapes. Very interesting for any archaeological um, person that would want to search the moon. Would it not be just the most incredible chance um this is planet jupiter and the uh, the moons around it of course and look at them we'll get in a little closer to some of the moons and uh, in the near future boy watch how i'll be showing planets my friends we'll be seeing a bit of everything but there's still so much research to be done on the moon uh, the secret is on the verge of coming out i believe here are some very interesting facts about planet Jupiter. Did you all know that there are 79 moons, but only 53 have been named? Um, there's still 26 awaiting official names. Combined scientists now think Jupiter altogether could have 79 moons. There are many interesting moons orbiting planet Jupiter, but the ones of most scientific interest are the first four moons discovered beyond earth the galilean satellites let's talk a little bit about what these moons do so which moons am i talking about we're talking about the galilean moons which is low europa with the water inside we have ganymede with the core they say callisto so now let's talk about the moon interactions three of the moons influence each other in an interesting way. Lo is in a tug of war with Ganymede and Europa, all pulling each other. And Europa's orbital period time to go around Jupiter once is twice Lo's period, and Ganymede's period is twice that of Europa. In other words, each time Ganymede goes around Jupiter once, Europa makes two orbits, and Lo makes four orbits, the moons all keep the same face towards Jupiter as they are orbiting at all times, meaning that each moon turns once on its axis for every orbit around Jupiter. Disclosures 
Come 